Be Quiet has decided to add some bling to one of its popular cases. So today we're looking at the Be Quiet Pure Base 2 FX. Okay, inside the box you've got the case. Obviously we've got a manual with a colour front on it. The inside is black with orange print, so it's sort of colour in a way. You've got plastic cable tidies. I would have preferred Velcro in all honesty. I saved the environment and everything like that because they're reusable. You've got to this attachment you put on your screwdriver, which allows you to remove or add standoffs to the motherboard tray. And then you've got sort of one pack split into three of all the different screws it comes with. Okay, let's have a look at some of the highlights of this Pure Base 500FX. It's got impressive lighting, multiple modes for your lighting, so you can have it however you want. And you've got maximum airflow with that mesh design. The fans, what it comes with, are the light wings, which are very good fans from Be Quiet. It's also got an ARGB PWM hub, which allows you to sync all to six components and six fans with your motherboard, which is really good. It's also got USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C as well, ready for radiators up to 360 millimeters, up to two SSDs directly on the back, as well as two hard drives or four SSDs in total. It's also got the side panel, which is made of tempered glass and a three years manufacturer's warranty. Okay, let's have a look at the case. So first of all, let's go to the side. So we have got a tempered glass side. This is roughly four millimeters thick, which is pretty good. It does have some protection on there. Let's pull that off. There we go. Otherwise it's pretty straightforward to get off. You have to remove these four thumb screws here, or you could use a flat headed screwdriver, but so they are loose enough where you can do it by just obviously your thumbs. But just watch it when you're removing all of these because it, they do have a tendency of the glass falling out sometimes. So always make sure you're holding it in to at least a certain degree because the last thing you want to do is shatter your glass. But all you do is then just pull it off. And as you can see, there's nothing really holding it in on there. So it could potentially fall, but that's it. There's no more protection on the inside. And the glass does though have like a black in a layer there to cover up all the grommets and so forth on the case. Okay, the front of the case is pretty straightforward. You've got two panels here, which are for the ventilation, so that's full mesh. You've got two strips going down, which I have got RGB effects on, obviously when the machine's on, and then you'll see the RGB effects of the free fans, which are directly behind it. It says be quiet on the top. Now you can pull the front off. You have to get a bit of force though. And there we go. And you can actually see the inside of the case. You do have a dust filter here, which you can then remove if you wish to. I'm just having a look, which is the easiest way. There we go. It's like a little clip. You just pull on the door and it comes off and then you can access the fans or clean the filter. Okay, so the top of the case at the front, you've got your IO panel. So it says USB 3.1 and that's a Type-C connector, but the paperwork we got sent says it's USB 3.2 Gen 2. We're waiting for clarification on for that and we'll hopefully put that on the screen above it if we get that before we release the review. You've got a standard USB Type-A connection and that's USB Type-3. You've also got your power button there. You've got a microphone and a headphone socket there, two separate ones, and you've got an RGB button if you're wanting to control it through that button instead of your software and your motherboard. Otherwise, on the top, you do have this mesh. If you remove the mesh, which it's just magnetic, it just pulls straight up, you can see where you can fit all your fans and water coolers if you wish. Okay, on the other side panel, it's just two thumb screws and it slides off. But one thing to know about this side panel, and this doesn't usually happen to most side panels, it has actually got sound dampening on the one side, which will help, obviously, absorb some of the sounds from the case. Obviously, it's only on the one side. There's not on the bottom, top, any of the other sides or anything. It's just on that side. So it'll get a little bit, but not a huge amount of that noise, but every little counts, and I suppose there's an extra bonus, really. But otherwise, on the back of the actual case, you've got your fan there, which you can see the rear of it, which is the Lightwings fan, which is a, if I'm right, a 14 centimeter fan. We'll measure that in a few seconds. And you've got your IO cut out there for your motherboard. It's got seven bays to put in your obviously graphics cards and any other PCI Express or PCI cards you've got. There's no vertical mount option. You've got room here for your actual power supply, but to fit the power supply, rather than sliding it in from the side, it's one of the ones where you have to, to undo these thumb screws. Just undo them. 
So you undo the front screws, you attach that to your power supply, and then you slide your power supply in that opening there. Okay, on the bottom of the case, you've got four plastic feet, which have got rubberized bottoms to stop it sliding on your desk, which is good. One thing I must say I do really like on this is the dust filter on the bottom. A lot of cases what have filters on the bottom, they're sort of clipped in and you have to turn the case upside down and so forth. This one just pulls from the front out and you can remove the whole thing and clean it off with ease. And then it'll just slide back in with ease as well without having to mess about. So ideal if you've got something like water cool in your machine and you don't really want to have to turn it upside down to clean it out. Okay, let's have a look inside the case. So as you can see, you've got your motherboard tray there. It's got some nice big cutouts down here to feed your cables through. It's also got cutouts at the top as well. It's got a couple at the top there so you can feed through your CPU power cables and so forth. And if you've got water cools or fans up here, you can feed them through there. You've also got a couple of cutouts on the shroud at the bottom there. So you can feed through your cables. When I say a couple, there's actually three. There's one hide in there as well. You've got the shroud at the bottom, which doesn't have a window. So you can't see what make of power supply you've got, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on if you've got a good or a bad power supply, I suppose. But it would be nice to have an option there. Always say something like a window, and then you could have like either a door or a slider or a piece of rubber what goes over the top of it, which you can either cover up or not. The shroud does have little holes in the top, so like a mesh top to it to allow ventilation through, which is also good as well. There is a little bit of a cut out here, but you can't really get any cables through because that's where your hard drive bay is. But you can remove those hard drive bays if you wish. Bear in mind, if you're going to fit a 360 millimeter radiator in here, you can only do that on the front of the case and you will have to remove that hard drive bay to be able to fit them in. So just bear that in mind. If you want a 360 mil radiator in there, no hard drives. You can have two SSDs though on the back of the tray, which we'll have a look at in a few seconds. Otherwise, you've got those fans in here. You've got the light wing fangs. As you can see, it's got a little bit of white bit there. That bit lights up so you can see it directly from the side. Now, fitting wise, you can put on here fans on the top. You can put two 140s or three 120s. Would have been nice to have the option for three 140s. That way you would have been able to put a larger 360 millimeter radiator up there as well, which you can't because the maximum radiator you can actually have on the top is a 280, a 240 or a 120. You can't fit a 280 or a 360 on the top. On the rear, you can do a 120 or a 140, which is good. And as I said, on the front, you can go anywhere from a 120, 140, 240, 280, all the way up to 360. The CPU height for the cooler is 190 millimeters. And for your graphics card, you can do 369 millimeters. Should be long enough for pretty much most graphics cards. Unless you're fitting a big water cooler in there, it will reduce that size down quite a bit. And obviously, you've got the power supply we spoke about room on there it will take a 258 millimeter or a 225 depending on the position of your hard drive cage and to my knowledge you may be able to move that cage a little bit further back but we'll have a look at that in a few seconds at the top right hand corner where the io panel comes in you have got some cabling coming into the main compartment but that cabling is all black and it is pretty much pushed all the way to the top so it is out of the way Okay, on the reverse side of the motherboard, this is what you've got. So the first thing what stands out to me is you've got a controller here. You can fit up to six fans, six RGB devices on the controller. Bear in mind, though, because you've already got four fans, which have all got RGB on, it takes up pretty much most of them. You've only left with two extra connections, which would probably be ideal if you were connecting up, let's just say, a 240 millimeter water cooler, which, funnily enough, we're going to be doing in a few minutes. One thing to note, though, is this controller board here is actually over the back of where your CPU would normally be, where you would be fitting connections. You can remove it, little thumb screw, just unscrews, that bit will come away, so you can fit it there. But just to bear that in mind, it could get in the way if you are trying to fit things, if you've already got all your tape cables too tight and so forth. Otherwise, you've got room here for the two SSDs, which can fit in here. The cables go in there and you screw in there and so forth. You've also got that hard drive bake at the bottom as well, which is here and here. You just take these thumb screws out and you can remove the hard drive bay. 
and you can slide it around a little bit if you want. Your power supply, as we said, goes in from the back and would be sitting in here. You've got lots of cable tidies, tie down areas and stuff like that, which is pretty good. A nice bit of Velcro they are using there. So would have been nice if the extra cable ties are supplied would have been Velcro as well. But again, it's still pretty good. Now going down to the cabling, all the cabling is black with the exception of, oh look, HD audio, which is multicolored sachet packet. Come on guys, 2022 is going to be 2023 before we know it. And we've still got RGB colored cables, which we had in the 1980s. Come on, it is not really needed. You can get rid of the, the, those colors, paint them black. It doesn't take much. Obviously, if you're trying to do this at home, you can get a marker pen and go over them, to be honest with you, or put some in isolation tape over the top of them and it'll cover it up. But I don't like having to have multicolored cables plugging into a color-coded machine, especially when everything else is black and then you suddenly got that sorry to go on but it's one of the things that drives me crazy is you can get a 10 pound 20 pound case which doesn't do this and then you can spend 150 pound on some cases and they do this so going on to the rest of it as i said looks pretty good you have got a bit of room there for cabling so it should be all right you shouldn't have any issues just bear in mind you have got that foam on the back of the actual tray, what goes on the back or the side, which will limit you down a little bit on the actual room you've got to put your cables. Okay, down to testing. So first of all, we're checking the CPU temperature. This is a 12700K processor from Intel, so it gets pretty warm. With the front on, we've got 74 degrees. The front off, we've got 72. And when we take the mesh and dust filters off as well, we've got 70 degrees. That basically means in our testing for 30 minutes with Cinebench, there isn't much of a difference if you have the front on or off, which generally means that you've got pretty good airflow. Yes, there is four degrees difference, but saying that, that is actually very little compared to a lot of cases. Now, we did the same test again, but this time we're testing the graphics card. It's a 3070 GeForce graphics card with the front on, off, with the mesh on, or off, whatever. Whatever way we did it, it came in, came in at 64 degrees, which basically meant it made no difference, which again means that the airflow on this case is pretty good no matter which way you do it. Bear in mind, we're testing with the fans running at full whack 100%. Obviously, it may differ depending on your components and speed of fans and so forth. Now, the sound levels, this is the decibels over room, was roughly 12 to 13 decibels. Margin of error and so forth, it doesn't really make much of a difference if you've got the front on or off there. So in all honesty, I'd leave the dust filters on and the front on because it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And at least you've got that peace of mind, it's stopping the dust getting into the computer. Okay, so to the final part of the review. So first of all, let's go through the good things and the bad things. So bad things. First of all, I think the front is a bit difficult to remove. You have to really give it some force to actually take the front off. So if you wanted to clean the front dust filter, it can be a little bit difficult. Saying that, why is there really a dust filter in the front of the case? Because it's already got a fine mesh on the front anyway. So why would you need a dust filter as well? It's like wearing two condoms. You're not going to get any more protection because you've got two on. On top of that, the cabling can be a little bit tight inside with the, if you're using a full ATX motherboard, especially down towards the front part where you can put your 24 pin connectors and so forth. So make sure you feed your power supply connectors through first before you put your motherboard in. Otherwise you may struggle a little bit. Otherwise that's it pretty much for the negatives. The positives is you've got a case what's full of RGB lighting. You don't need to add any more. It's got all the fans you're going to need. Again, you're not going to need to add any more, so it's going to save you money in the long run. It looks very nice. It's got a good airflow, which is a bit of a strange one because normally good-looking cases don't have a good airflow. But this one somehow manages to do both, so I can't say anything really too bad about it. Plenty of room to add stuff in there. Yes, you can't go over the top with too many... 360 mil radiators or anything like that it might be a little bit too tight in there and you may have to do a few compromises but for a small case absolutely brilliant and i do highly recommend it did you enjoy that review i know i did why not check out some other be quiet products we've reviewed in the past by clicking this box just up here yep that one right there otherwise if you want to see other cases we reviewed in the past then click this box just down here Otherwise, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, you know the drill, and we'll see you next time.